Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today, oh man, the honeymoon period is officially over for the Rise of Skywalker, at least when it comes to the holiday sales. Everyone, of course, went back to work and to school on Monday, and the box office numbers show that when you compare the numbers that we have right in front of us. And so you have a 68% drop from Sunday to Monday, with it only making two. $2.9 million on Monday. Now, a lot of people might try and spin this to say, well, that's typical of most blockbusters. But once again, going to the narrative that must be constantly brought up, uh, that this is not just a regular blockbuster. This is supposed to be the end of a saga. This is the ninth film in the supposed so-called Skywalker saga. And we're seeing massive drop-offs like what we shouldn't be seeing. Especially when you compare this to other movies like the fact that Jumanji The Next Level made two million and Little freaking women made 1.3 million. The fact that you only have about a million or so difference dollars on a freaking Monday between a Star Wars movie and a movie called Freaking Little Women should cause any person with a brain cause for concern. So what does that actually mean for the overall box office? Well, Rise of Skywalker still has amassed around $927 million, which remember is definitely nothing to snuff at. I'll definitely add that into the calculations over on the Excel sheet in a little bit. But this does make it very, 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 very clear that this movie is not going to have the legs it needs in order to match the other films like, for example, Rogue One, Last Jedi, etc. In fact, when you go ahead and look to the daily box office performance, seeing it drop to these single digits is pretty phenomenal when you come to think about it, especially when other films in the same franchise took a little bit longer to drop to that low in the single digits are part of their runs. One of the ways that we can see and one of the ways that we can look to that is by going into the versus category, which is a very excellent metric for there to have on the numbers.com. So remember that now a movie that we have to bring into the mix and into the discussion is Rogue One, a Star Wars story, because it's obvious at this point that it's not going to, that Rise of Skywalker is not going to match The Last Jedi, but now it might not even match up with Rogue One when you adjust for inflation. So let's look at these day-to-day -day numbers. So at the same time in history, and again, here is where the danger red flag needs to go off. At the same time in history, the third Monday of its release, The Last Jedi had made $14 million while Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, had made $15 million while you only had $2 million here for the rise of Skywalker. Now, many people will look at these numbers and say, but wait a minute, $440 million, that is less than the number for the rise of Skywalker. And that is true. However, keeping in mind that this film was made back in 2016, meaning that you have to adjust for inflation, which, and I had someone yell at me in the comments section just the other day about, well, you should bookmark your inflation calculators. That way you're not having to look for it. But you know what? People like when I just do this stuff on the fly and I appreciate the advice. I think they apologized and said that their comments seem to come off as rude. So thank you for that. But it's just a part of the fun for me. So 2016 is when the film came out. We calculate that number. That means in today's numbers, that would be $472 million. In fact, let's give the benefit of the doubt and say, oh, it's 2019 numbers. The movie would still be at $469 million when adjusted for inflation. This, of course, is as of today for Rogue One, a Star Wars story, $469 million versus the $454 million of The Rise of Skywalker makes it very clear that The Rise of Skywalker is starting to fall behind. So as I said, it took a while before any of these other films reached that type of single digit numbers. Look at this, seven and six million dollars on this day. None of these movies reached the two million dollars in a day or less than two million dollars in a single day then until the fourth Monday after, which means that the fourth Monday after was this 
And keep in mind that we have a film called 1917 coming out this weekend, among a couple of other films. I can only imagine what the Rise of Skywalker fourth Monday numbers are going to look like. Could we see a sub-million dollar fourth Monday? That would be freaking amazing to see. But when we look to the overall totals, it is very clear now. $454 million versus the $531 million of The Last Jedi puts this movie getting very, very close to being $100 million behind in the domestic totals, which if that indeed holds or at least is somewhat close, seeing that The Last Jedi ended its run around $628 million when you adjust for inflation means that the best that this film can really hope for this time is around $528 million or in that area. Subtract some, add some. And if that's the case, and if the 5149 split holds between the international and foreign marketplace, the international and domestic marketplaces, then you're looking at a film that's going to cap out at best at $1.1 million or billion dollars, I should say, which let's just be honest, is a catastrophe when you think about what kind of a film this is and what kind of money this film should actually be making. So let me go ahead and try and pull up for you the box office numbers for you. And again, someone's going to yell at me saying, why don't you have this thing bookmarked? It's because this is just how my brain works. I have ADD and this is how it works. I'm going to update the rest of these box office numbers in a second, but let's go ahead and add in the current box office numbers for The Rise of Skywalker. So as as you can see, it's currently at $927 million. So we got on another $8 million or so to this number. Boom. Meaning the film. Hey, guess what, guys? Good news for Star Wars. Good news for Disney. You've made $31 million in net profit and net gain. Great for you. Some are arguing that it's probably not that much, but according to the numbers that I've decided to put, pick out, it looks like you're profitable, and it'll be interesting to see what the other industry leaders and the deadlines and Hollywood reporters have to say about this kind of drop-off. Once again, this movie dropped down to $2.9 million on a Monday in its third week of release compared to the $14 and $15 million of The Last Jedi and Rogue One, respectively. We are definitely in a world now where this movie might not even be able to beat Rogue One. I still honestly believe that the film will reach a billion dollars, but the people that are out there still saying, I don't think it's going to reach a billion, I don't think it's going to reach a billion, you know what? If these types of numbers hold... If we don't see, and here's the big kicker, we have crazy Tuesday discounts at movie theaters nowadays that weren't really as prevalent back in 2017 and 2016 for Last Jedi and Rogue One. Not to say that it didn't exist at all, but it's definitely a lot more prominent today, which could definitely have a boost in these Tuesday numbers. But I really don't see how you're going to have the movie make so much in this week, especially when it's expected to have yet another 50% drop or so, which means it'll make as much as this did in its next weekend, or maybe just a little bit more. It's really hard to say. Again, this film ended up making around $22 million in its second weekend, where The Last Jedi, rather, Last Rise of Skywalker, made around $36 million, a 50% drop from that. You know, would put that in that, what, $18, $19 million range. So you're looking at a movie. That is dying off very quickly, does not seem to have the legs, will likely come in at the very worst as the second lowest grossing Disney Star Wars movie ahead of Solo A Star Wars Story was lost $200 million, still not a flop in its own right. But in my, uh, in my mind, I just can't see how you cannot understand and expect this to be a negative in the eyes of Lucasfilm. And if I were them, if I were running the business and I was looking at these numbers and I said, wait a minute, you're telling me that the end game of Star Wars is going to come in at the, as the second highest grossing Disney Star Wars movie below films like Rogue One and Last Jedi? Oh man, we need to have some changes behind the scenes. So here is us to us hoping and praying. So that's the box office update for the day. If anyone's getting tired of these box office updates, I'm sorry, but I love talking about it. These videos do very well, but I also thoroughly, really honestly enjoy talking about it. I can't wait to update the rest of the numbers here. I like always seeing, you know, is a film currently in the black? Is a film currently in the red? Like for Cats, how much in the red? How much in the black? It's the reason why I continue to talk about it, and it's also what leads me to make videos 
feels like the biggest bust of the year or the biggest box of successes of the year, which are videos that I still have in the works as of right now. Just got some new equipment today, including for my vlog camera. So I'm planning to do a vlog tomorrow where I go to pick up Joker on 4K. It was available. I know I'm excited for it too, River. You're exactly right. I could have picked it up today, but I just got the equipment in and I'm exhausted and <laughs> I get off a little bit early tomorrow. So I will go ahead and pick Joker up tomorrow. I'm very excited about that. But while I still have your attention, if you wish to support the channel, please consider becoming a Patreon member today. I post a lot of behind the scenes videos, usually featuring my dogs, but I've just recently updated the... Uh, the different tiers that include things like getting the shout outs during the videos, also getting access to special content like interviews, uh, special uh, podcast episodes, getting to be on the channel once a month, uh, being able to go through and, and to, to be able to listen to Q&A videos as well. So I got all the stuff that's being added on. Go ahead and check out those tiers. One of the differences about Subscribestar is that I actually have the ability to do giveaways over here. So just as an example, I had a digital code Blitz where one could have chosen from any one of these movies and, and been able, oops, can't update or I can't um, expand that here. But anyway, uh, 101 Dalmatians, Aladdin, Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, Batman Beyond Series, Dumbo, uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters, John Wick 3, Jurassic Park. All of those are movies that I give away, so I do a lot of giveaways on the Subscribe Star, which I highly recommend that you sign up for. If, again, you don't want to support the channel, allow me to continue to do the work that I do. Those are the places to go to. Check the links out in the description. Also, if you want to say, screw you to the Oscars, if you want to say, hey... I want to be able to tell you what the actual best film of the year is, or I want to tell you that there are some really bad movies this year and some crap world builders, then the Wednesday Raven Awards are for you. This will be the second year that I'm hosting the uh, the uh, the Wednesday Raven Awards, and it is basically a boycott of the Oscars. The nominations are still open, so you can nominate any of these categories or nominate people or uh, persons or, vid or movies for any of these categories all the way up until around January 12th. So please uh, check the link in the description. You'll find it. You'll be able to, uh, you know, maybe bookmark it, save it for later if you want to. We put in things like Best Movie, Kathleen Kennedy, Ryan Johnson Award for Excellence Craft, World Building, Lifetime Achievement Award, Best Original Film, and then, of course, some of my all-time favorites, Most Overrated Film, Most Critically Acclaimed Piece of Garbage. Not only is this movie overrated, it's terrible. Shill of the Year, NPC of the Year, and so many more categories. So please click on the link in the description below. Also, of course, continue to follow me over on the OMB website, ombreviews.home.blog, where you can follow uh, scores made for movies, movie reviews, and of course, you can have access to the chart that I just showed you over here, which updates in real time as I update the numbers daily. So anyway, let me know your thoughts about this and all the things we talked about in the comment section below. What do you think is going to happen with the Star Wars box office? Do you think it is now officially hit its wall? Do you think it's just going to plummet from here on out? Do you think it's going to slow enough to possibly not reach a billion? Uh, I'm not quite there yet, but I will say if these numbers hold domestically, it's going to become very, very hard, especially since now movies that are actual competitors like 1917 are starting to come out into theaters, and no one seems to be wanting to see this film a second time. So let me know your thoughts about that and all the things we talked about in the comments section below. If you like this video, smash the like button, give me a subscribe. It helps me out a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.